And don't forget tonight's game against the Brewers is one of eight remaining Dodger games you can see right here on KTLA 5 after tonight our next broadcast this coming Wednesday when the boys in blue travel to Chi-Town to face the Cubs at Wrigley. It's all thanks to our unique partnership with Spectrum Sportsnet LA. And time now to talk a little Dodger baseball. It's our pleasure to welcome in Clint Pasias and Brooke Smith from DodgerNation.com, which is a must for Dodger faithful. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us. Let's start with the overall assessment. We've had a pretty good sample size now. What do you make of what we've seen so far? Uh, I think the, the narrative kind of feels like uh, they can't beat the, uh, the playoff contender teams. It seems that way. Um, but either way, if, if the team feels good, they're just trying to figure out who they are in 2019. Obviously, last year is a team that relied so much on the home run ball. And uh, while they tied that consecutive home game, home run streak just yesterday, uh, I wouldn't call home runs their only source of power this season. That's pretty good. The team can hit. Unfortunately, they just can't really out hit bad pitching, which was the struggle for a little while. All right, what about Clayton Kershaw? He is back. He threw seven innings, five hits, two runs, six Ks, no walks. Did he look like the same old Kershaw to you? And what do you think the Dodgers can expect from him this season? I think the thing I will say, first of all, is he is 100% not the same Kershaw at all. And if you look at his pitch, okay, usage, I think that's a really telling sign of it. The, uh, For the first here. time in, like, forever, he uh, – used his slider he didn't really go to his fastball very much but he did throw a lot of first pitch strikes I think 18 of 24 or something like that mm -hmm. for first pitch strikes but definitely not the same Kershaw but a lot better looking he's healthy and if he's healthy we can get that bullpen healthy quicker mm -hmm. Yeah, good outing for Kershaw uh, in your latest fan poll on Twitter you asked if this bullpen is living up to its potential, the Dodger faithful voting a resounding no. I'm wondering with Kershaw back, Ryu coming back, Hill coming back, how do you think that domino effect is going to help the bullpen? I think the, the domino effect has kind of already started. Uh, Stripling was, was the leader that, that sort of started, got the Dodgers out of that skid, and now there's, what, four straight quality starts. That's been big, and that's helped the bullpen. Like, that's been huge. I think they have an ERA around, like, three since that started. But more importantly, they're not throwing two or three innings a game. So we go with that, and now you get Kershaw back. You got Rich Hill coming back. Of course, Ryu starting uh, this Saturday. A lot of different moving pieces. Stripling probably makes his way down to the bullpen. Urias down to the bullpen at some point. And uh, it just really strengthens the back end of this game and, and that bridge to Kenley Jansen. Walker Bueller finally had a solid outing yesterday against the Reds. He's been up and down so far this season. Uh, you think he's ready to take the mantle from Kershaw? <laughs> We've been wanting it for a while. We were really hoping he could figure out like the way to start opening day, and we were hoping he'd start every game of the World Series, but unfortunately we couldn't make that happen. But, uh, yeah, it looks like now he's finally gotten through that, that – uh, you know, spring training during the season that he had to go through. And uh, luckily him and Rick Honeycutt, uh, looks like they found a little bit of a delivery or a mechanical issue in his delivery uh, before yesterday's start. And you saw him, uh, you know, he looked exceptional yesterday, six and a third inning, uh, one unearned run. So really, really excited to see uh, Walker with uh, Walker Unchained, <laughs> I'm going to call him this year in 2019. You know, last week, last week we were talking about the hot start that Cody Bellinger had. A lot of people holding their breath when he got beamed on the knee. He looks to be okay. People are using this MVP acronym. Uh, what do you think has been so different about Belly this year? I think one of the biggest things is he's, uh, he's not chasing those pitches out of the zone for the first time in probably his career, even his rookie year. I mean, but you're talking about a guy who's just crushing the ball, leading the league in average hits, on-base percentage, OPS, slugging percentage, pretty much every offensive category that's out there. And the ones he's not leading in, he's second place, third yeah. place in, just behind the former MVP, Christian Yelich. So if you're looking at holes in this guy's swing right now, there aren't many of them, yes. if any at all. He's checking off all the boxes. All of them. <laughs> Finally, I want to ask you about one of the young guys who is highly touted, and so far he's living up to the expectations. Alex Verdugo batting 600 against lefties. Is this a guy that merits more playing time? I'd say just based off of his batting average against lefties alone, 100% it should merit more playing time. He is 
an electric kid who's uh, just crushing the ball. He's getting on base. He's not taking his walks when they're will, coming, though. Will not walk. You will not to, walk. You don't need to walk when you're raking, and this kid is just <laughs> raking. He's getting his hits, and, and yeah, he looks exceptional. It's a, it's a fun outfield to see for sure right now. Well, uh, you can follow Dodgers Nation all season long on their site, DodgersNation.com, and on Twitter, at Dodgers Nation, and Instagram, official Dodgers Nation. Their podcast, Blue Heaven, drops every Thursday. Guys, we thank you so much for joining us tonight, and we appreciate your insight.